you need an accounting software that can allow you to take control of your finances. Not one that will turn you into an accountant. And that is what I'm going to introduce you today. Welcome to Beautiful Accounting Software. Let's begin. Hello, my name is Mukonki Mukonkela, and I'm the host of the Dharma Insights Business Show, where we turn your challenges into actionable insights. Today, I'm going to introduce you to beautiful accounting software. So, drum roll. <laughs> Ladies and gents, I'd like to introduce you to Zero, the cloud-based accounting software. For those of you that don't understand what cloud means, it simply means online. If you use internet banking, you are using cloud banking basically so even for accounting softwares we have online accounting softwares that are referred to as cloud-based accounting softwares now zero is an accounting software that was founded by road drury who's based in new zealand is the founder and former ceo of the company called zero which is also named after the software that we use for small to medium sized businesses so today I'm going to give you a walk through of what Zero is. Let's begin. The first thing you see when you log on to Zero is the Zero dashboard. The Zero dashboard gives you an overview of all your bank accounts, any accounts that you'd like to keep a close eye on, any invoices owed to you, bills you need to pay your suppliers, as well as cash coming in and going out. Let me go into the details very quickly. So from the Stanbic bank account, so you can see actually that from the dashboard, I've got two bank accounts. One is the Stanbic Quacha account. The other one is the Stanbic USD account. And these are some of the things that you can do straight from your dashboard concerning your bank accounts. You can actually do a spend money transaction you can also receive money and you can transfer money. You can also reconcile your account straight from the dashboard. In terms of the account watch list, this is where you select specific accounts that you'd like to keep a close eye on. So I've selected advertising, entertainment, inventory. And I also want to know how much sales the company is making. So I've also selected sales. And so this is what you're able to get from your zero dashboard. A very important one is the cash coming in and going out. In this period of COVID-19, everybody's keeping cash flow close to their heart. And so this is very important that you take a closer look of how much money is coming in and going out. This is what you get to see from your zero dashboard. But before you can actually get to see this beautiful dashboard, you need to do your organizational setup. The most important thing you need to do when setting up your organization on Zero or any other accounting software is to set up the chart of accounts. On Zero, you access your chart of accounts from the advanced settings tab. To access the advanced settings, you look for your organizational name, click this drop down arrow and look for settings. Under settings, you need to go at the bottom of the page and look for advanced settings. Under advanced settings, you are going to be able to find the chart of accounts. Now, most accounting softwares come with a standard chart of accounts that you can then tailor make to suit your organizational needs as well as your organizational goals. So let's take a look at the zero chart of accounts. When you click chart of accounts, you find that Zero already has a standard chart of accounts created for you. You see all the account codes, account names, and the type of account it is. And all you need to do is to tailor make the account codes as well as the account names to suit what you really want to achieve in your business. The chart of accounts is made up of five major categories. And in any business transaction, falls in one of these categories. So we see that this is the assets, liabilities, equity, expenses, and revenue. So whatever transaction occurs in your business falls under one of these categories. 
if you look at the revenue group you'll be able to see that for this demo company there are three accounts that relate to revenue and these are sales with an account code of 200 other revenue with an account code of 260 and interest income with an account code of 270 and so this is the chart of accounts the other important thing that you need to set when looking at your general settings for the organization on zero is the accounting method last week i mentioned there are two accounting methods that you need to consider are you using the cash basis of accounting or are you using the accrual basis of accounting? So you need to tell the system what method of accounting you are using. And you do this from the financial settings tab. This is on zero. So you click the financial settings tab and then you choose the accounting method that you are using. And you find the accounting method down here. If you click this drop down arrow, you'll find the cash basis and then there's the accrual basis. I'm sure you can remember from my previous video, which you can watch by clicking the link on top of this video in terms of how you go about choosing the accounting method that you can use in your business. Let's just assume this business is using the accrual basis of accounting. Now also keep in mind that the, uh, the method you use for accounting is important for tax as well which is why you are seeing the sales tax up there because it is extremely important for the tax authorities in terms of what basis of accounting or the method of accounting you are using uh, and this in allows the tax authorities to be able to assess your taxes um, as required for VAT as well as for income tax so it's very very important so let's save this. Accounting method is very other than the financial settings, they are quite an number well set up. The other important thing that you need to set up are your bank accounts. And you can set up your bank accounts from two different menus. One is the organizational setup, advanced settings and then the chart of accounts itself so when you come under advanced accounting you are going to find the chart of accounts and under the chart of accounts you can set up a bank account so you simply click add bank account and you should be able to set up your bank accounts you need to find a bank account or type it in there manually. So, for example, you will say Stanbic Bank and search for it. If Stanbic Bank is connected with zero, you can get bank feeds straight from Stanbic Bank. But if it's not, you need to just add it anyway. And for Zambia, there are no bank feeds yet. There are no banks that are working with zero, so you cannot get direct bank feeds. In order for you to get your bank statements on zero, you need to actually upload a bank statement. So having entered your bank name, you also need to enter the account name. And in this case, I would like to keep it as the bank name because Stanbic Bank, so that you can identify it from the dashboard. And then you are having done your general set. You will do most of your business transactions or day-to-day -day accounting work under the business menu. When you click the business menu, you are going to find sub-menus that relate to your sales invoicing, your purchases referred to as bills on zero, and also your inventory, also referred to as products and services on zero, and your payroll. Let's take a look at your sales and we'll start by taking a look at your sales overview. When you click the sales overview, you're going to see these four different buttons. They are buttons that relate to your draft invoices, your invoices that are awaiting approval, invoices that are awaiting payment, and overdue invoices. You also get to see a graphical representation of all your money coming in through your sales as well as any customers that are owing you. So you see the list 
of customers by name as well as amount. Below that, you're also going to see all your quotations. And there'll be quotations sitting under draft, the ones that you're still working on, the ones that you've sent, the ones that have been accepted, and those that have expired. In order for you to create an invoice, you can do that from different places on Zero. You can create an invoice right here by clicking this drop down arrow and clicking invoice. You can also create an invoice by simply coming under the same business menu and clicking invoices. You can also add an invoice by clicking this plus icon, click the plus icon and then you click invoice. They will all take you to the same place where you'll be able to create your own invoice. So let's add an invoice by clicking this plus sign and invoice. As you can see, this brings you to this template that you can now use to post or create your sales invoice that you can send to your customer. So let's just do one invoice together very quickly. If you want to create an invoice and this is for a customer who's already in your system, let's just say we want to send this invoice to Rex Media Group and with today's date and assuming that the due date is within five days. So we'll say plus five, it should give us the due date on which this invoice should be settled. The invoice number is generated from the system sequentially so you do not enter it manually a reference number can be from maybe your quotation maybe rex media got a quotation from you a few days ago so you can maybe put a quotation there as a reference number or whatever referencing that you would like to use the branding has to do with how your invoice is going to look like when you send it to your customer then you choose the currency let's take our base currency which is the Zambian Kwacha for our example because it's a company based in Zambia so you need to have the Zambian Kwacha as your base currency and then you put a description so maybe uh, T and T is selling a computer and one computer and they are selling this computer maybe for 13,000 Kwacha it's pretty expensive there's no discount and then it's going to go to an account called Cord Sales. And once you are done with that, you can choose to do different things to that invoice. You can save it in draft and once you, once you save it in draft, it will be sitting under the window for draft. So let's save this invoice as a draft and I want you to see how this invoice is going to move on the different windows that we spoke about earlier. So if you see, now my invoice is sitting under draft. There it is, it's Rex Media Group, and I created it on the 10th of August. It's going to be due on the 15th of August. The amount is 13th. So you can save the invoice under draft if you still want to make any changes to it. So let's see, I'm happy with this invoice and I now want to send it for approval to my supervisor. I can come to the same drop down arrow and save and submit for approval. So let me click save and submit for approval. And you're going to see that the invoice is now going to move from the draft window to the awaiting payment. Sorry, to the awaiting approval tab. So let's click the awaiting approval and we are going to see it sitting under awaiting approval right there. So once my supervisor logs in using their login ID to zero, they'll be able to find all the invoices that are sitting under awaiting approval and they'll open the invoice that they're interested in or invoices they would like to review and approve. And they'll take a look at the invoice. If they're happy with it, they'll go ahead and approve the invoice so let's approve the invoice when the invoice is approved you see that it's now going to be sitting under awaiting payment so let's go back to the sales overview and see where the invoice will be sitting so you see that it's going to be part of these 10 invoices under awaiting payment 
and you can see it right there 13,000 awaiting payment now as long as it's sitting under awaiting payment it is also part of the invoices that needs to be paid and so a payment has to be added so when your customer pays you let's assume they pay you on the 15th of august itself which is the due date you then need to come back and add a payment and this is where the bank accounts become really useful when it comes to zero accounting so you come to the same invoice and then receive a payment if it's a full payment you just it zero automatically you pick up the invoice value and then you add the date paid let's assume this date this invoice is going to be paid on the 8th of august and then this is where you now determine which bank account is actually receiving that money so as you can see we've got two bank accounts here the zambian kwacha stanbic account as well as the us dollar stanbic account we are receiving this amount in the zambian kwacha stanbic account so you simply put zambian kwacha stanbic account ignore this exchange rate it has to do with the base currency and because we are using a demo company zero has set up the us dollar as the base currency so just ignore this pop-up window and if you want further details on how foreign currency transactions work you can join one of my webinars or full training on zero this is just an overview of zero so once you put the bank you can then add a payment when you add the payment you can see from the window that this transaction is going to come off from the add payment okay add a payment So you automatically see that this transaction will no longer be part of our waiting payment. Before I added a payment, there were 10 transactions under our waiting payment. And now this transaction is going to move to this window called paid. So it's going to be among these transactions that have been paid. And so this is how you go about utilizing your sales submenu, or this is how you go about selling or creating invoices for your customers let me show you one more thing before i move on to the bills you can email this invoice to your customer you don't even have to you know print a copy and you can just click email and you'll be able to send this invoice straight to your customers and you can also determine whether you want to receive a copy as well yourself attach it as a pdf and all of these things that you, you can do and then you can send click send and your customer is going to be able to receive that invoice automatically now this makes zero very unique in that you are able to send invoices to your customers as quickly as possible and this allows you to actually quicken the process for you to receive cash flow in your business and so this is a very fantastic feature for zero you can actually also set invoice reminders again this is something that i can uh, you can see when you join my full training course or webinar that i offer on zero training so you can set invoice reminders to tell your customer and zero will automatically generate those reminders and send them to your customers to remind them to make a payment before this due date itself again that's a very good way for you to ensure that you get your money in as quickly as possible or as agreed with within your credit terms with your customers and so this is how you go about looking at your or utilizing your 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 sales or creating your sales on a day-to-day -day basis for your customers the other tab is the bills that you need to pay this is where you now post all your expenditure all your invoices that have to do with your purchases as well as uh, receipts for your purchases so you simply come to bills you need to pay or purchase overview let's go to purchase overview and you're going to see that you have similar buttons as you add on sales as well so the bills and the the, the sales invoices work in a very similar way you can also add a bill by clicking this plus icon and add a bill and it's a very similar window that you get to the sales invoice the only difference is now this is you are creating a bill or a purchase invoice 
that you've used in terms of your expenses or that you've received from your suppliers for your expenses and so i'm not going to spend much time because this is an introduction to zero but you, you just keep bear in mind that it's the same process that you went through when creating your sales invoice and then you can also submit it for approval or you can approve it and add a payment as well so this is where you actually spend most of your day-to-day time or in terms of accounting transactions this is where you spend most of your time doing your data entry onto the zero accounting software so now that you've done the general setup of your business you've understood how to create an invoice as well as post your bills or expenses on zero you now are able to get the reports that will allow you to take control of your finances and I'm going to spend just a few minutes to show you some of the beautiful reports that you can get from zero that will allow you to start understanding your numbers and also to start turning your business around. So let's take a look at the profit and loss report. Zero offers you beautiful reports that you can use to analyze the performance of your business. And you do this or you find your reports under accounting and then reports. This brings you to this very beautiful window where you find different reports that relate to your sales, your purchases, your inventory, as well as a general financial performance of your business. For the profit and loss report, you will find it under financial. And there are two reports under P&L. There's the new version as well as the old one. I will show you the old profit and loss or income statement. The profit and loss report allows you to be able to see how your business has performed in terms of your sales revenue minus your direct costs or cost of sales, less your general or operating expenditure, and also whether you are making a profit or a loss. So this is what you now see at the bottom of this report. So that is what the profit and loss report allows you to be able to see. Is your company trading at a profit? And you can get this quickly at a click of a button. There are different formats of the profit and loss report that you need to be aware of. And Zero has created very beautiful formats for you already. All you can do is just click a button. For example, if you want to review your current month compared to previous three months, this is actually the, the format that you see immediately you click click the profit and loss report and this is what you are seeing here the current month is august compared to three previous months and then an overall year to date figure this is the year to date figures relating to your sales and your expenses as well as your year to date profit or loss and there are other formats that you can take a look at you can also compare your performance against a budget this is very nice when it comes to you understanding whether your business is actually meeting its budgeted targets or goals i love the actual against budget because this is where you get useful information very valuable insights that you can actually use to turn your business around there's no budget set yet in my next video i am going to show you how to create a budget on zero then you'll be able to actually compare your actual performance against your budgeted performance when it comes to your sales and your expenses and so this is an overview of the profit and loss report Report and the beautiful information that you're able to get in terms of how your business is performing and whether you're actually making a profit or a loss. Remember what I said at, about the profit and loss report? It is a report that will allow you to understand how profitable your business is. Now let's look at the balance sheet. What kind of information would you get from zero concerning your balance sheet? The other important report that you need to review is the balance sheet. The balance sheet is a very important report because it provides you with the net worth of your company, which in other ways means that it shows you what your business owns in terms of your assets, as well as in terms of uh, the amounts that you owe to others, which are your liabilities. So if I take a look at today, 
and you can review your balance sheet based at a specific point in time so i want to look at the balance sheet as at today which is 10th august 2020 and i will be able to see all the assets that we own against all the liabilities that we owe to others giving us our net worth as a company how much is a, is our company worth now this information is useful to lenders as well as any person that would like to invest in your business and even for yourself you also need to understand you know the kinds of investments you are making in your business who you are owing money to as you can see there's a general breakdown here in terms of the current liabilities and there are also long-term liabilities which are not reflecting in in this demo company that i'm using and so this is the balance sheet it's a very useful report and many financiers actually look at this report in order to analyze the net worth of your business you can also in fact it's very recommended that you do a comparative of a previous period or a previous year for you to be able to see how your business is performing in terms of movements in your assets as well as your liabilities and so this is the balance sheet Having understood your balance sheet, I would like to show you one more report that you can use to understand how your business is performing, especially if you sell on credit. And this is the accounts receivable report. Let's take a look at this report and what kind of insights it's going to give you. The edged receivable report is one of the most important reports that you need to review if you sell on credit. If you sell anything on credit, this is a report that you should be able to quickly get and review and understand all your unpaid invoices this report will show you the details of each customer that is owing you along with the amounts that are due or overdue so in this example of the aged receivables analysis for t and t fab things as at today's date which is august you'll be able to see a list of all the customers that haven't yet paid and when these invoices which month these invoices fall in you know and then this kind of report allows you to take certain actions and one of the actions you can take let's have a look at this amount which is due overdue almost by 63 days so you can do quite a number of things with this just this information because you know that this customer probably had agreed that they need to pay you within 30 days but now they are overdue by 63 days so you can send them a kind reminder a kind reminder or depending on you know if it, it, it's overdue for so many days like 63 days you could have already sent them reminders when the invoice was was overdue maybe by a day and then you finally you know start escalating your reminders so you can create different reminders from zero automatically those reminders will be sent to the client and this will allow you to actually you know keep in touch with your customer so that you can collect your cash from these unpaid invoices and so this is what the aged receivable report allows you to be able to do it setting up a beautiful accounting software such as zero and failing to use it is one of the major reasons why most entrepreneurs actually fail and so in my next video, I'm going to share with you the biggest financial mistakes businesses make and how you can avoid them. If you've subscribed already, as usual, thank you so, so much for subscribing to my channel. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe by clicking the red subscribe button it's at the bottom of this video and also the bell icon so that you can be reminded whenever I have a YouTube video out.